exactly is intercession? Who should I come to? <laughs> not that word. I'm not going to pick on anyone to do that now. <laughs> I'm going to be chatting about that. Now. But certainly, intercession and praise are they one of the same thing? We're just speaking to God in a way, isn't it? Intercession, praise, we're just speaking to God. But are we? When we go to God in prayer, we're asking God for help. Some of us might be greedy. We may not just ask for help. We might ask for a big house. We might ask for a lottery win. We might ask for, you know, the biggest thing on everything on the planet. But, when I check on Google for intercession, what is actually intercession? Google tells me, Google is, Google is quite good, isn't it? You know, if you don't want anything, you, we all go to Google these days, don't we? You know, what did we do before Google? But Google tells us that intercession is the act of intervening on behalf of another. The action of saying a prayer or praying to a deity or a saint on behalf of someone else. You see, when we pray, we're just having a one-to-one -one with God. We're talking and listening. Yeah, we're having a one-to-one. -one. But when we intercede, we are stepping in on someone's behalf. We are standing in that gap between the thing and God. Intercession is a <coughs> prayer to God, praying to the heart of God about a specific situation. It is not just about taking a message and speaking to God. Yeah, as we in the sea, we, we suddenly move into this, this secret place with God, don't we? This secret place with Jesus. Intercession is much deeper than prayer. It's not just a two-way, isn't it? Yeah, we are, this is the thing we want to pray about. This is God here. And we are in the middle. The person doing the intercession is in the middle. And the interesting thing about it is intercession is about taking what God is saying, transferring it. Yes, so we're the, we're the, we're the person who needs to see this. We're taking a message from God, we're interceding. We're then taking that message back and we're working out, God, God knows the plan. We're taking a message, we're working out what needs to be done and then we bring that message back to God. Yeah, does that, does that make sense? Yeah? So it's, God works to us. The intercession, we call it intercession, it can be called mediation, it can be called intervention. Yeah? But what we do know, it is we know it is deep. We are in the middle. God is at the other end. We are standing between God and what the problem is. We are quite unique, think we then, who is the person doing the intercession or interceding, because we've got our feet in both camps, think we? <laughs> we've got our feet in the earthy camp, yeah, the problem, and we've got our other foot in the other camp, the spiritual camp. So we've got a brilliant connection, that brilliant connection between earthly things and the spiritual thing. We are in the middle. So, we know that God knows the problem. We know that God knows how to deal with the problem. Because we know no problem is too big for God, don't we? God knows what problem, He knows how to deal with that issue. So why 
why does he ask us to intercede? Why does he give us the message and still ask us to bring back the solution? He knows what the problems are. Because God leaves it up to us to try and work the issues out. And he wants us to work them out and bring them back to him. See, God wants us to listen to himself. And that's what he's doing. And too often we don't quite listen, do we? We don't quite listen to that voice. You know, one of the things I love is being in a foreign country. A country where English is not spoken. I know there's not many countries where that doesn't happen, but I love being in a country where English is not spoken. And just to hear people speaking, just to hear them speaking, and you cannot understand what they're saying unless you speak that language, but just listening to them, concentrating on what they're saying, and trying to work out what exactly they're saying. I think that is, it puts our listening skills to the test. And that's what God wants us to do. Everything is jumbled. We can't understand it. <laughs> but listen to what he is saying. Many of you might still think, well, if God knows everything, what's the sense of praying? God knows what he's doing. Yeah. Regardless of what we do, we're thinking, regardless of if we pray or not, God knows what he's doing. He's powerful. If God really wants to change something, he can change it, can't he? Surely. But if he were to believe that God will just change something for the sake of changing it, I think we need to probably start thinking again. God wants us to be part of that. So that's why intercession is not just important, it is essential. There's that sort of battle which is going on, that battle which comes between us, you know, and God, you know, that yeah. We want something. God still says, you know what, I know what you want, you're not gonna quite have it yet. It's a bit like a child, isn't it? You know, sometimes, you know, you probably remember growing up and you want something, so, you know, you're pleading to get that thing, you're pleading to your mum, right? Your dad is there in the middle, yeah? And you know if you go and speak to your dad, your dad is then going to speak to your mum, and you might end up getting it. Did that happen with me for some reason? You know, so, <laughs> if I went to my mum and stuff, it was no. Went to my dad, your mum said no, right? <laughs> But there's that, there's that fight that goes on, isn't it? That fight between good and evil, yes or no? Yeah. And that is also a spiritual fight. It is a spiritual fight, which can only be won through prayer. So we continue to pray. <coughs> We're one in the middle. We are praying. We are praying to God, and we keep praying to God. See. Before we start having battles and fights and everything like that, what do we do? Or what should we do? We should pray, shouldn't we? We should pray and we should ask for God's intervention. We should ask for God's help. And that's what we do. When we're interceding on someone, we're asking God for help. We're entering into that partnership where we're asking God to work with us and work through us. Work with us and work through us. From God to the problem. Work through us to the person. Last week we heard Vanessa talk. I think we have heard Vanessa talk. And she talked about knocking and the door will be open. Seeking and we will find. 
And sometimes we think that that door is closed, don't we? Sometimes it feels like that door is closed. But the only way that door is going to be open is if we keep knocking. God is at home. God just wants us to keep knocking and to keep seeking. And when we knock, and when we continue to knock, that door to heaven will open. For reading the Bible says that we will then see angels of God descending and ascending as the will of God is being done. We will see angels ascending and descending as the will of God is being done. Once we knock, once we see God, once we talk to God, the gates will be open for us. When I read this today, there's various places, you know, we talked about intercession and we talked about Abraham and Abraham was interceding on behalf of the city of Solomon and he was pleading with God, wasn't he? And when I saw, when I, when I look at that reading and I think about that reading and I think about him pleading with God, I don't know what picture you conjure up in your head. But the one I conjure up in my head is a picture of this little man looking up to God. There's two, there's two pictures of it actually. One of the pictures of this little man looking up to God and saying, please God, spare the people. Yeah, that's the first one I see. And he's having that negotiation with God. What if these 50 people are righteous? Would you destroy the city? What if there's 40? Would you destroy the city? Please don't do it. In fact, that's what he's saying, isn't it? But then at the same time, there's that friendship that Abraham had with God, isn't it? And it feels like a friendship. It seems like a friendship sometimes. But he's having that dialogue. You know, part of his dialogue says, May the Lord not be angry with me, so don't be angry with me. Don't, don't be afraid, don't be angry with me. Let me speak to you just one more time. Not only if, they, if, if there's ten people, are you still going to destroy the city? Oh, come on, come on, God, you know, be reasonable here. You know, don't destroy the city if there's ten people who are righteous. Let's, let's work on something. What Abraham didn't realize, and is that there was a trust which God had with him, hasn't he? Mm. The Lord trusted him. The Lord already knew what he was going to do. He wanted to save his Abraham's family. He had come and he was sitting there, he sat there, he had a meal with him and everything, so he's got a friendship, isn't he? So he's built up that relationship with him, so he's not going to destroy his family. He knows, the, Lord, the Lord knew he wasn't going to destroy his family. What he did not do, which he finally did, was reveal all of his plans. The Lord knew what his plans were. From the outset, he knew what his plans were. But there was a test, wasn't it? And there was a test between him and Abraham. There was a friendship was to developed. You know, let's see how this, let's, let's play this one out. You know, Abraham could have turned away from God. He could have sort of said, well, you know what, I'm trying to speak to you, I'm trying to negotiate for the righteous people, you're not listening to me, why bother? But he didn't. Because Abraham also trusted the Lord. He didn't know what the plan was, but he trusted the Lord. And the same thing could be said about the Israelites. Yeah. Um, remember Jeremiah and the Israelites? When the Israelites, they were all sinful, they kept sort of sinning against God, they kept doing disobe being disobedient to God. And Jeremiah was pleading with God on their behalf. God already knew what plan he had for Israel. He did not tell it to Jeremiah at that stage. 
He told the pig, then told it to him a bit later. But Jeremiah spoke to the Lord. And God got hell with him then, but he didn't, get, he didn't quite get hell with him. I used the word hell loosely. You know, but he probably said to him, you know what? I'm not listening to you anymore. Stop pleading on behalf of these sinful people. Yeah, I don't want to hear your prayer anymore. Not that he didn't want to hear his prayer, because he, he was still, everything was still being taught. He was just saying, Trent said, I've got a plan which I've already that plan I will reveal to you at the later stage. So why, again, why are we asking for intercession? If God has this big plan. God has a big plan. We are a part of that plan. But we need to do everything that we need to do through prayer. We need to be his intercessors. I was thinking about, as I was thinking about the intercession, I saw the thing wrong. One of the biggest, one, one of our greatest intercessors was in fact Jesus Christ, wasn't he? He was our greatest intercessor. Came on this earth. He died for us. Yes, he interceded. The reason he died for us was because for, for the forgiveness of our sins. How much can anyone else give at that? And even when he was at the point of death, at the point he was being crucified, what did he say? Father, forgive them, for they are not what. Father, forgive them. So even at the point of death, he was interceding. He was saying, please, please God, don't punish them too hard. They don't know what they've done. What have we learned from today? Probably too much, probably not enough. I think there's a message which is coming to us from God in, from these readings. I think what we need to do is start thinking and start listening. Start thinking about our world. Are we sinful like the city of Sodom? Have we turned our backs on God like the Israelites did? Because if we do those things, you know we're going to be punished. God's bigger plan. Is God speaking to us and telling us we need to clean our act up? Is he telling us that we need to clean this earth up? I know we talk about the pandemic and, you know, so some people I speak to, we speak about the, you know, is this God's way of saying to us that this earth has been ravaged. We need to take action. We need to do things. We will never know. Because that's, we don't know what God's big plan is. But what I do know is that we need to try and listen. We need to try and listen to that little voice which we hear and which we sometimes cannot. It's sometimes we, we get, sometimes it's lost in the translation. We don't know if the voice is the voice of good or evil. But what we do need to do is try and tune ourselves into that voice and decide for us if it's God who is speaking to us. Anytime it is God who is speaking to us, we hear his voice but we are not listening. I started by saying, a voice with one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. I will finish with 
decline of our Lord God will come again. He will come to judge us. And his plan will be revealed. So listen to his voice. Let us try and listen to his voice. Let us prepare for him. Let us make sure there are no obstacles in his, our lives. Let us do God's work, which is to intercede for ourselves, for our church family, for the community, and for the world. Let us think about what behaviors we need to correct. Let us ask God to forgive us our sins. And let us take everything to God himself. Let's turn away from our wicked ways and seek God. Let's intercede for the people of the world. That small voice, the voice of God speaking in the wilderness, 